Back now. It's been a pretty busy week uh, this past week for elections in uh, Sadak area, Botswana. They are at the polls today, but uh, let's not forget that a few days ago, the Mozambicans went to the polls as well, and uh, the ruling party Frelimo was uh, facing its uh, long-time opposition and uh, one-time war enemy, Renamo. And uh, the uh, results are still coming through. And the issue has been, of course, that Renamo is starting to push back a little bit, saying that uh, the uh, Frelimo party had uh, broken a peace treaty that had been signed between the two parties. Well, to help us to make sense a little bit of uh, what the situation is in the country at the moment, I'm now joined by political analyst uh, Gideon Chitanga. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you. All right, so the opposition, Renamo, are saying that uh, a fragile peace accord has been broken by the ruling party's forces, uh, or the government. Uh, your thoughts on that, and what does it mean? I think this is um, a, a problem that uh, a lot of uh, analysts suspected would happen. It has uh, serious implications mm -hmm. for post-election uh, stability, of course because the ideal situation would have been for the election outcome to be accepted by all competing political parties and allow a, a proper, a, a legitimate government emerging out of these elections to govern, maybe with some a, arrangement to accommodate uh, the key conflict players. Um, what I see is that in the immediate term, this will raise tension between uh, supporters of Frelimo mm -hmm. and uh, supporters of Renamo. I don't see uh, Renamo, espe especially the faction that is led by Momade, wishing to escalate the conflict too far. But I think uh, what they are indicating mm -hmm. uh, some point of leverage to get um, Frelimo to negotiate some kind of political space or accommodation right. with them or a working arrangement. So I think, and depending on the extent to which Frelimo would be uh, proactive, it is something that is still within the political players to, to arrest. All right, so um, you don't think that this could escalate to a point where people go back to that really long and bitter and bloody civil war that we saw? No, I don't, I don't think so. The, the, the dynamic of the conflict has shifted beyond that kind of mm. a situation. He, even at the time when Afonso Lagama was still the, the leader, you, this has been a conflict that has been long. He, he, it, its dynamic mm. shifted to, to a, a negotiated settlement. Right. So, so what I think would happen is that um, the key players are likely to continue to negotiate. And, and by the way, he, negotiations are not an event. They are a process. So we are likely to see key players, and particularly uh, President News has indicated his commitment to um, negotiated settlement. So he's likely to uh, continue to push for that. Another uh, dynamic of it is that Frelimo, where it is now, it's, it, it's weakest. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, it's, it is almost uh, had a split. Uh, although Momade is leading uh, the, what is, looks like the main faction, um, its former militants, or most of its militants, are post the 40s in terms of their age. I, it's failing to attract the young people into its ranks. And I, the appetite for, for military conflict, I think it's, it's not there. I, so mm -hmm. what I sense is that uh, the sentiments that are being raised, which are legitimate, of course, because I, part, partly some of it were raised by international observers, I, they will be they will have to be addressed within a framework of mm. continued negotiations but the best thing that could happen is for Frelimo to evaluate its victory and be magnanimous to the point of accommodating other players to ensure stability I, they there are also huge incentives for for stability I, I, in, in 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 the economic uh, drivers the 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 discovery of gas I, Mozambique likely to become one of the biggest producers of liquefied gas. Mm -hmm. The key players who are going into that sector would be interested in a stable Mozambique. So e, the environment and the conditions are such that e, there are no options for, for militarism. Mm -hmm. All the parties would be incentivized to find a settlement. Do you think that the voters voted on issues or just loyalty to parties? Look, um, 
it's an obvious case with mm. uh, these dominant political parties. They, there is a sense in which, especially in the rural areas with uh, low levels of education, e voting behavior is formed very close to political habits. And uh, looking at the extent of underdevelopment and literacy in Mozambique, I think that's a, that's a key factor. E but that is not to say that African voters are not smart. Mm. They, they choose, they listen to policies. And I think, e like I inferred earlier, if a lot of Mozambicans were evaluating between Frelimo and uh, Renamo in spite of uh, all the negative indicators in terms of corruption, e the economy, e the natural disasters, there is still a sense to which uh, Mozambicans believe that uh, Frelimo is the best bet going forward. All right, so uh, as we start to wrap up this conversation, for the next uh, uh, few years, Frelimo will probably be uh, running the country once again. Uh, but is this a, uh, I won't say wake up call, but is this something that they really need to take note of uh, that next time it might be very close? I actually think that... Uh, it was close now. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, 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 I think that uh, the margin of victory could yeah. shock the, the, the Frelimo elites. Uh, but the, the party and the country are in serious problems. So we have just referred to the natural disaster, mm. uh, the floods, and the conditions coming out of that are still dire. The economy uh, is still facing such a slowdown, the poverty levels... Uh, th there is still a kind of a low intensity uh, military conflict in Mozambique. Uh, in the north, they are dealing with um, uh, a, a kind of an insurrection that is uh, being associated with Islamic militarism. It's not clear whether uh, this is a conflict coming out of a population that is disgruntled or otherwise. Yeah. But I think all these conditions calls the, the leadership to make an internal audit and try to cultivate better developmental conditions because the young generation is normally not very patient. And going forward, uh, these young people are looking for jobs, they want better education, they want better living conditions. And I read an article uh, two, three days back about uh, the idea that young people in Mozambique, particularly in the cities, they increasingly think that you make money by getting involved in, in corruption. They mm -hmm. have a word for it. And this comes from the corruption cases uh, where the state has been implicated in a huge corruption and uh, one of the ministers was here and so on. Mm. So I think that the government has to um, be very bold in stemming inequality and poverty and make sure that instead of getting a small group of political elites who are networked, accumulating, these resources have to trickle down to the ordinary people. That's the only way Mozambique mm -hmm. can be stable in the medium to the long term. Okay, Gideon Chitango, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much indeed uh, for coming in and sharing your thoughts with us this day. Thank you. Thank you so much. So that's uh, African Affairs expert Gideon Chitanga talking to us about the situation in Mozambique. And I'm sure uh, he'll be chatting to us uh, in the near future. We have situations playing out all over SADC and across the continent.